Sometimes in coding, you want to write repeated code. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a loop structure, specifically a while loop, for you to do that efficiently. As you can see here, I have written out an ellipse functions four times to draw four circles on our canvas, right? The x locations range from x equals to 100 to x equals to 400. If you look at the ellipse functions right now, they are basically almost the same exact repeated code, right? The only difference is the x location. It's okay to write it this way when we are only writing it four times to create four circles, but what if we want to create 10 circles, 100 circles, or 1,000 circles? Writing it this way is very inefficient because it's going to make our program a lot longer and a lot more clunky. In order to solve this, we can use a loop structure. And specifically, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a while loop to solve this specific issue. First, let's look at the while loop syntax. As you can see here, we have the word while. And then in the parentheses, we have a condition. A condition is like we learned before, we can put like a Boolean expression in here. And then we have a curly bracket. And then within the curly brackets are the instructions that we want to repeat. If you look at this syntax, you might realize that, hey, Pat, it's very similar to something that I've seen before, which is an if statement, right? We just changed the word if to while. But actually, an if statement and a while loop have very different ways of working. The key differences between a while loop and an if statement is that within an if statement, when the condition is true, then the commands within the curly bracket are called. Just only once, and then we get out of the if statement altogether. But with a while loop, if the condition is true, then the instructions within that while loop is called over and over and over again until the condition becomes false. So actually, it's quite risky to use a while loop if we don't have this thing called an exit condition. An exit condition is a condition where there is something that updates the condition so that it becomes false at a given time. Right? Because if the condition stays true all the time, then the instructions within the while loop will be called over and over and over again until our program crashes. So for you to really understand the difference between a while loop and an if statement, let me show you an example. So what I have here is an if statement with an instruction to draw an ellipse and then an instruction to change the x location one pixel at a time. Right, This is nothing new, so you can see that x is moving to the right until x is equals to 300, right? And then we stop drawing a circle. Let's see it again. There you go. But then if we use a while loop, let's see what happens. You can see slightly something happen on the screen and then everything disappears. For you to understand what actually happened here, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the setup function and the draw function. Imagine a flipbook. A flipbook is a book that are stacked together page after page, right? And the images that are on there once flipped very, very quickly. You can see like something animated. It tricks your eyes to see this animation from images that are kind of slightly change from one to another. If you think about the setup function and the draw function, the setup function is the making of the flipbook, right? This stack of papers together into one book, right? But the draw function is actually each of the pages on the flipbook. The commands within the draw functions are the images that are drawn on one page of that flipbook. When the draw function is called 60 times per second, it's like you flipping through 60 pages on the flipbook. And because you make a slight change in your draw function, for example, when we have a circle that moves from the left to the right, we change the x location. That's how we change the images on the flipbook. And when you flip it, you can see that the circle moves from the left side to the right side. What you saw just now with a while loop where you saw something happens and then just like a clear screen of nothing. If you really think about why we are using a while loop, we want to use a while loop to write our repeated code more efficiently, right? Meaning that we used a while loop to draw four circles on one page without having to repeat the code over and over again. 
So a while loop is actually used to write commands that are written on just one page of the flipbook. What happened just now is that we want to draw a circle where x equals to 100 to x equals to 300 and repeated that command several times so that it can appear on the first page of the flipbook. But once we flip to the second page, the x location is already at 300. So it never goes back to the while loop again. And so on the second page and third page and fourth page, you don't draw anything because we're never calling the instructions underneath the while loop. And so for us to fix a while loop here, what we need to do is that we need to reset the x location, right? So we will have to reset from x that is equals or more than 300 to x equals to zero every time the draw function is called. And let's play. You can see that it's kind of like a trail here. And that is because the shift on each of the X location is so small. So why don't we give it, let's say 10. See, so now we use a while loop to draw several circles on our screen, starting from X equals to zero to X equals to 299. So now you can see a clear difference between an if statement and a while loop and why you would use a while loop to write repeated code. In this example, what I did is that I use a condition that is specifying the location of the X coordinate, right, of the circle. What we can do also is that what if we set the count number, right? We just want to say that, hey, we want to draw a specific number of circles, right? So first, we need to reset the count number to zero every time the function is called. And we say that if x, if count is less than, let's say we want to draw five circles, then you draw this, right? And we need to make sure that we increment the count so that there is a point where count is not less than five. Let's try it. So now you see that we only draw five circles, right? But because we only increment x location by 10, why don't we try 100? And then we can change the number of count here to let's say 10. Now we draw 10 circles that is off the screen. But now you can see that there are ways that you can use a while loop to execute repeated codes by giving it a specific condition and you need to make sure that you have an exit condition so that your program doesn't crash. In the next video, I will show you a different way of writing a loop, and that loop is called a for loop.